Jesus had been crucified and buried in a grave, not because of his sins, he knew no sins, but because of our sin. In this lesson entitled The Third Day, we're going to talk about why is this third day so essential, valuable, and important. Happy Resurrection Day. Ladies and gentlemen, there are notes for this lesson. I'll leave a link in the description below and in the comment section. Click the link, get your notes, your Sunday school books, and your Bible. For the Kojic Legacy edition of the Sunday School is now in session. You better join me and let's go. Teaching the Word of God in the spirit of excellence. Join Elder Rodney Jones with our Sunday School lesson. Building and equipping the children of God. Grab your Bibles, grab your notes. Get your lessons and get ready. Now let's go. Hello and welcome to another edition of the Sunday School Lesson as taught by Pastor Rodney Jones. I am the pastor of a new nation and on the ministries, Church of God in Christ. And we're located 1700 West 87th Street, right here in the city of Chicago. The zip code is 60620. Ladies and gentlemen, if this is your first time, please leave me a comment in the comment section below that this is your first time. I'd like to welcome you to Sunday School. I'd like to thank you for studying with us as well. Do me a favor, if you please, please, sir, please, ma'am, Lord have mercy, if you would just hit that thumbs up, give it a thumbs up, smash that like button, and also make sure that you subscribe to this channel and click that bell notification. There is a free subscription. The purpose of the subscription is so that YouTube will notify you each week. Bing! Brother Jones just uploaded another lesson. Today we got a good one. We're dealing with... The third day, we're in Hosea 6, 1 through 3, Church of God in Christ. And then we jump to Luke, the 24th chapter, verses 1 through 12. Today's date is Resurrection Day. Happy Resurrection. He got up with all power in his hand. This is March 31st, 2024. Some call it Easter, but we understand that this is resurrection. This is the highest service, the highest day on earth, because this is the day that the Lord rose from the grave. Hosea speaks to a group of individuals. He writes to the northern kingdom called Israel, because Israel was doing some things that were ungodly. They had went into ungodly ways, idolatry, they begin to worship other gods. The Bible actually calls it whoredom because they went whoring after other gods. And so God was upset and angry with them and he caused them to be in affliction. They thought that they could escape the punishment of God and look for the Assyrian nation to heal them only to find out that that is not going to work. As a matter of fact, that's not how that works. That's not how none of that works. Let's get into this. Father, we thank you for this lesson. We pray. Amen. Let's go and let's see what we can get into. Now, the question really is, is, is this Hosea speaking or is this the people beginning to realize to focus? What is your answer? Do you think that this is actually Hosea speaking or is this the people coming together to talk and reason? First thing they says is come and let us, let us return. Let's return unto the Lord, all cap. Here is the reason why. For he hath torn and he will heal us. He hath smitten and he will bind, bind up. Very interesting word where we get a word called bandage. He will bind us. Bandage. Let's see what we can get into. So Israel had abandoned the Lord by worshiping of the idol gods. And the one of the problems is that they had defiled God 
and commit whoredom against him. Chapter 5, verses number 3. And the Lord said that he see everything that they were doing. Same chapter, same verse. He said their deeds won't let them return to God. And they had the spirit of whoredom uh, in verses number four. The prophet pleads for the people to return back to God. And they've decided finally that they would return back to God rather than running to the Assyrian king in chapter five, which is what they were doing. And rather than looking to and coming to God, they went to and depended on that king. The problem was and is they found out that that king had no solutions and could not do anything against God. The king, once God set an affliction and or a punishment, then they were not able. He says that he will heal us. He has smitten. He beat us down, yet he will bind or he has or will bandaid, bandage us up. Verses number two, because we got a long way to go. It says, after two days, will he revive us? In the third day, now watch that third day. It's not what you think it is. He will raise us up and we shall live in his sight. The his is the Lord. Then, once this takes place, they say we will know. If we follow on to know, and really that word know means to experience or, 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 or something like that. Uh, his going forth is prepared as the morning and he shall come unto us as the rain, as the latter and the former rain on to the earth. So God said that he will return unto his place they acknowledge uh, uh if they are not and they will have to acknowledge their sin Whew! that would be chapter 5 verses 15 but god said that he would return unto his place he said he will stay there until they seek his face chapter 5 verses number 15 and last, he said that if they will seek his face, or he says that they will seek his face in their affliction. Slow down, Jones. And I didn't bring none of my water. All right. Then the people makes this proclamation, the plea or this beg to come and let us return unto the Lord so that he can uh, restore us. Come and let us return because Israel, the Bible said it was full of pride. That was another problem. Chapter five, verses number four. When they go to sacrifice to the Lord, he says they won't find him because he will be hiding himself from them. So they have betrayed the honor of the Lord by bearing children that are not his. And that's why Hosea had to marry his wife to show Israel of their relationship with God. They went after other gods. So Hosea, poor man, had to marry Gomez, I believe her name was, and she would always step out on him. And God was said that he would destroy Israel as a moth consumes wool, verses number 12. He said he would make Judah as weak as rotten wood because Israel turned to the king of Assyria when they were sick but not to the Lord, chapter 5, verses number 13. And God says, I will tear them to pieces and carry them off, and no one will rescue them. He says, for he hath torn and he will heal. They had to recognize that it was because they had done wrong that God punished them, God ripped them, God tore them, God dispersed them, God separated them. But they said, but God is the same God that can heal. They thought that they could be healed by the Assyrians, but they found out that the answer is no. Chapter five, verses number 13. It says he has smitten, which means to strike us, to beat us and to injure us. But then he will bind us together. He will bandage us back. Then we will know if we follow on to know the Lord. In other words, let's return unto the Lord and be acquainted with him so that we can understand him.
They wanted to reconnect with the Lord, to experience him by way of worship. We want to know, we want to follow him. They left God and became acquainted with idolatry. Now they want to return to God, leave and forsake idolatry, and be reconnected and experience God. First thing they must do is forsake their gods and come to the true and living God. It says, He shall be, or He shall come unto us as the rain, as the latter and the former rain unto the earth. Israel had two main seasons or times of the year when it would rain. Uh, and that season would be, uh, let me see, the winter season or the winter rains, I should say from December to February. That's when the time where they will be sowing the wheat, the barley, and the oat. And then they will have the spring rains, which would go from March to April, which will produce foods, vegetable crops, and certain things. So the twice times of the year, from December to February, the early rain, and from March to April, the latter rain, or the opposite. Whichever one would come first, one is the later, and one would be the earlier rain. All right, so that's it for that. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Kojic. I will holler at you later on that one. Let's shift and let's get to <laughs> Luke, the 24th chapter, verses 1 through 12 which is the actual resurrection. So this lesson in Hosea is a sign of hope that the Lord is going to return. Now, remember I said that third day, the word third day has nothing to do with the third day in the lesson. That third day and that second day, uh, they were really saying that there is going to come a time period, uh, a short period of time. Let me go back to that after two days after two days he will revive us in the third day he will raise us up and we shall live in his sight uh, i felt like i missed that after two days in other words in a short period of time it's, it's not going to be for a very long time not in the eyes of god so they were saying that the lord is going to restore them in a short period of time prophetically they use the term after two days and in the third day, he will. That after two days and the third day, it simply means in a short period of time. Those are not literal two days. And it has nothing to do with the third day as we are reading in the book of Luke, the 24th chapter, verses number 1 through 12. I thought I would bring that up. And let's see what we can get into. Now, upon the first day of the week, early, very early, not just early, but very early in the morning. Now, watch when this took place, the first day of the week, which we call that, ladies and gentlemen, Sunday, not Saturday. Okay. They, we're going to talk about who the they, these are women, they came unto the sepulchre, bringing the, the spices which they, notice that they, they have prepared, and certain others with them, others. These are all women that are in this lesson. Uh, we won't get to the men, I don't think, at all. Yes, we will at the tail end. So let's see what kind of goodies we can get. So this took place after the Sabbath. Because on the Sabbath day, they could not do any servile work. That's Leviticus 23 through 25. And this was not a regular Sabbath. This is what's called a high Sabbath, John 19 and 31. I'm going to be giving you a lot of scripture. So it took place at the end of the Sabbath as it began to dawn toward the first day, Matthew 28 and 1. They had to wait until the Sabbath was over so that they can return back to the sepulchre. He says, upon the first day of the week, very early in the morning, they came unto the sepulcher. The women could not wait to get back to Jesus. They were in a hurry to return. Uh, these are the same women that beheld the crucifixion afar off, Luke 23 and 49. These women followed Jesus' ministry from Galilee to the grave, Luke 23 and 49. And they had to wait until the Sabbath was over before they can return. It was at least Mark named uh, Mary Magdalene, Mary the mother of James, and Salome. 
These were not the only women. There were other women also. How do you know that? Because here he says those women's names, and then he said, and certain other. So they here and they here would be the women in the previous verses, the previous chapter. So it has been at least three days now since the death of Christ. And they didn't know that Jesus had risen yet by now. Although he said that he would rise three days later, Mark 9 and 31, these women had no clue. Now what took place after the crucifixion of Jesus, Joseph of Arimathea, he buried Jesus in his own tomb, Luke 23 and 53. Joseph did not consent. He was a, an intelligent man. He didn't consent to the deeds of them or the things that they had done. He also was the one of the people that waited for the kingdom of God in verses number 51. This Joseph went to Pilate to beg for the body of Jesus. And this same Joseph of Arimathea took Jesus, wrapped him in the linen cloth, and then placed him in his own tomb with some spices. And this same Joseph had the help of a man by the name of Nicodemus, John 19 and 39. My dad called him Nick at night because he came to Jesus at night. This Nicodemus, who was a secret disciple, and so was Joseph of Arimathea, for fear of the Jews, they brought a mixture of myrrh and alloys, about 100 pounds, verses number 39, and they buried Jesus in the garden close by because it was nigh, John 19, 41. So that means that this was a temporary dwelling place for Jesus. Jesus didn't need a permanent grave because he wasn't going to be there in but, but, five, but three days. So after the Sabbath, these women came to finish anointing Jesus with the, with the spices because they, after, or uh, right as the Jews' preparation, these women followed the men to the gravesite, went and got spices to prepare for Jesus, and then went home and waited until after the Sabbath. That's who these women are. And I praise God for these women because they ministered unto Jesus, the Bible said, all the way up until the grave. Ladies and gentlemen, there are no men in this segment until we get to the tail end. Now, John is different and so is Mark different. So Luke goes right into it. He says they found that they, these women, they found the stone rolled away from the sepulchre. It's interesting because they was asking the question as they were on their way to the sepulchre with the spices, according to Mark 16 and 3. And the question was, who's going to roll this stone away? The Bible says it was a great stone and they needed to know who was going to roll this stone away. If you want to download your notes for this lesson, take your phone, put it on camera mode not movie, put it on camera, point it at that QR code. When the yellow thing shows up, touch that yellow thing and then go to where the notes are, type in the name of the title. So the question came up, how did they know where the tomb was? Because these women followed Joseph of Arimathea and Nicodemus. They saw these men take Jesus's body wrap him in linen cloth, put those alloys in him, and put him in Joseph's grave that he hewn out of himself, which was his grave. He, they placed Jesus in the tomb. Now the Bible said that he would be buried among the wicked and the rich, Isaiah 53 and 9. So the women saw where they buried Jesus and knew where to find him, Matthew 27 and 60. And Joseph, after placing him in this tomb, he's the one that set a stone there, Matthew 27 and 60, which is how the women was able to know that there was a stone. And their question was, who's going to roll a stone away for us? I love this because God has the answer. The Bible said, according to Matthew 28 and 2, that there was a great earthquake. 
And the reason there was a great earthquake is because the angel of God came down and rolled the stone away. I love it when man has a question and God gives an answer. The question was, who's going to roll the stone away? The answer came from God, I'm going to roll the stone away. What's interesting, it was dark. They had spices. They knew that there was a great stone, ladies and gentlemen, but that did not stop those women from going to the stone to where Jesus is. Why is it so easy for things to stop our produce, to stop our productivity, to stop our mission, our aim, our focus, our ministry? These women were on their way now, they didn't know that Jesus would not be there. They didn't know that there would be angels there. They didn't know that somebody would move the stone. All they wanted to know is who's going to move the stone, but they kept pursuing. At the same time, the, these, these chief priests had came to Pharaoh, a, a pilot, before this time and said, that man said that he's going to rise in three days. We need to set some guards there. And Pilate gave them permission. So they set guards there to make sure that the disciples don't steal his body. The Bible says that when that earthquake came, that the angel came, it was more than one. And those men saw the angel and they passed out. All right, let's continue. Let's continue. Yeah, continue. And they entered in and found not. Watch this. Two things they found. They found not the body of Jesus because they did not know that he would not be there. They didn't know that he had risen, although he told them that he was. So the women were asking who would roll the stone away, and God sent the angel to roll it away. Once they entered into the sepulcher, they were able to see that Jesus was not there. The women entered in the sepulcher because the angel moved the stone away. He moved the stone away so that they can be an eyewitness to an empty tomb. Come on, somebody. They were really invited by the angel to come in. In Matthew 28 and 6, he says, come on in here and see where his body was laying. The Bible said that the angel, at first he was sitting on, the, on top of the stone. Then he moved himself into the inside of the stone. Now, some scriptures, uh, one writer says it was an angel. The other writer says it was two men or two angels. It's the same thing. In order for there to be two, there has to be one. And Mark says one or a young man or whatever. That's because he's referencing the person who was doing all of the talking. This young man was an angel who had moved the stone, Matthew 28, 2 through 5. His countenance was like lightning and his garment was white as snow, Matthew 28 and 3. And the women were thrown into terror or amazement when they saw him. But they didn't pass out like the gods did. Come on, the, the gods passed out, but the women kept on talking. Fly! And it came to pass. Remember, it came to pass, which will also mean a process of time. As they were much, watch what happened. They were much perplexed about, behold, two men, here we go, stood by them in shiny garments. Two men, which would be angels. One writer said one man. Another writer says two. And they were afraid. So they go from being perplexed to being afraid and bowed their faces to the earth. They said unto them, why seek ye, watch what they call Jesus, the living among the dead. Why are you looking? So the women were not expecting to see any of the things that they saw. They were expecting to see the body of Jesus in a tomb, but they were expecting to see a stone closed. They were not expecting to see an empty tomb. They were only expecting to see the large stone at the mouth of the sepulchre. They had seen him brutally beaten and crucified just a few feet away. Now they come to his grave to anoint him only to see an empty tomb 
and they now see a stone rolled away. The Bible said that they were perplexed about, which means to be utterly at a loss or even to be puzzled. We could only phantom what was going on in their lives or even their minds. They had never seen anything like this before. The stone is rolled away and the body of Jesus is missing. They possibly saw the young men or the guards that was on the ground pass out unless they were already gone. On top of that, now they see angels at the sepulchre instead of Jesus. And now the Bible says that they were afraid. They saw angels wearing shiny garments. Verses number four, their countenance was like lightning. Matthew 28 and three. They were afraid at what they saw and they bowed their faces to the ground. The angel answered them and said, fear not, Matthew 28 and 5. The angel asked, why are you seeking the living among the dead? Right off the bat, the angel just testified that the Lord is no longer dead. I know you saw him when he was crucified. I know you saw them pierce him in the side. I know you saw him beaten brutally. I know, according to scripture, the word the Bible says in the book of Isaiah, his visage was more, more than man, any other man. I know he was unrecognizable. Yes, I know you saw Joseph and Nicodemus take him down off the cross. Yes, I know you saw them wrap him in linen. Yes, I know you saw them put them in this tomb and seal and close it. And the guards was here. But guess what? He's not here. <laughs> He's alive. He is Risen is what he said. Why seeking you? Why are you looking for the living among the dead? You're looking for Jesus? He ain't here because he's risen and he will never be in this place ever. <laughs> Come on, somebody again. Look at what they said. He is not here. And the reason he's not here is not that somebody took him. He's not here because he's risen. Then they take them into the past. It says, remember how he, Jesus, spake unto you. That means the women and the men when he was yet in Galilee. And this is what Jesus said. The son of man must, 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 must be delivered. This is why I keep telling people that Jesus was not in the garden asking God to take that suffering away from him. He understood that the Son of Man must be delivered into the hands of sinful men mm -hmm, and be crucified. But get this, on the third day, he would rise again. So the great testimony of the angels is he's not here, he's risen. Jesus, who you're looking for, is no longer here. He's not He's no longer where you saw him last. A few days ago, he was crucified. A few days ago, they pierced him. A few days ago, uh, they carried his dead body. But today, after three days, he is no longer here. Matter of fact, another woman already anointed his feet against the day of his burial. Come on, somebody. The woman with the alabaster box, John 12, 7 and 8. The angel reminded the women that Jesus told him them while he was in Galilee, that he must be delivered to the hands of sinful man. He must be crucified and he have to rise on the third day, the son of man. And we understand that Judas was the man that did it. Judas didn't have to. Please do not teach what you heard. Only teach what you've studied. We find nowhere in scripture where the Bible says that Judas had to do it. Don't look at certain words. Uh, Judas, which, which, uh, the, uh, there's a phrase that would make one think, uh, which should betray Jesus. The word should, which me would mean intent, uh, purpose, uh, desire, because Judas was a thief and he sold Jesus for 30 something pieces of silver. But when he saw that day, what they was doing to Jesus, it hurted him and he tried to repent but they would not accept it. So if Judas had been born for this purpose, why would God then cause him to burn for obeying him? Mm. 
Never teach what you've heard, only what you've studied. So the Son of Man must be delivered into these evil hands and then be crucified. And on the third day, he will rise again. And Jesus had mentioned this to his disciples about him rising again in John 2 and 19. And they didn't remember this until after his resurrection, John 2 and 22. Anyhow, and ladies and gentlemen, salvation is based on the fact that we believe that God raised Jesus from the dead, according to Romans 10, 9 and 10. The Bible said that if we confess with our mouth the Lord Jesus, not sin, he didn't say confess sin. He says out of our mouth we're to confess that the Lord Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. If we cannot believe that God raised Jesus from the dead, we cannot be saved. Mm, he's not here. He's risen. And then they remembered his words when the angels brought it back to their remembrance. And they returned from the sepulchre and they told all these things unto the eleven because one of them fellows was dead. And at this point on, they were called the apostles the eleven or the twelve. It doesn't mean that all eleven was there, but that's what they were called because they were uh, separated from the regular disciples and Jesus began to call and appoint them the uh, apostles. And to the rest, because there were other people, when you look in the book of John, there were more than just the 11 that was there. So the women had completely forgotten that Jesus said that he was going to rise again. They came to the gravesite looking for him, not remembering that he would rise. After seeing that he was not there, they still didn't put it together until the angel had to rehearse in their mind that he told you that he was going to rise again. Then they were told by the angel to go quickly and tell his disciples and Peter, Mark 16 and 7. He had to separate Peter because at this time Peter was messed up because Peter denied Christ three times and Peter went away troubled in his spirit because he denied. So one man betrayed him, the other man denied him, so on and so forth. He says, tell them uh, first that he is risen, Matthew 28 and 7. Then tell them to meet him in Galilee like he said for them to do it, Matthew 28 and 7. Because Jesus told them once he had risen again, that he would meet them in Galilee, Matthew 26 and 32. It's interesting that they did not remember this at all. He's gone. Now later, Mary Magdalene would be the one to first see Jesus. She was rewarded with seeing Jesus. Here he tells us who it was. It was Mary Magdalene, Joanna, and Mary, the mother of James and other women that were with them, which told these things unto the apostles, or also called the eleven. Now watch this. Their words seemed to them, who was to them? The apostles, as idle tales, and they believed them not. Now don't jump on the men because they did not believe the women. You don't know what these women were doing that the men wouldn't believe them because I'm going to show you that the men didn't believe the men as well. So Luke gives the names of the women that came to anoint the body of Jesus. There were other women that he didn't name at this point. Mary was the leader, Mary Magdalene, of whom Jesus cast out seven devils. She was the leader and she would be the first one, according to Mark 16 and 9, to see Jesus. She was the one that went and told Peter and her disciples, John 2 and 20 and 2. The women ran to tell the apostles what happened, but the men didn't believe them. Their words seemed to them as idle tales. Another word for idle tales means empty talk. It seems to them as nonsense. Not only that, but Jesus appeared in another form to two men who were on their way to Emmaus or on the Emmaus road. Mark 16 and 12 they didn't believe those men either. And Jesus had to upbraid them because 
of their unbelief. And lastly, we get to verses number 12, and it says, Then arose Peter and ran unto the sepulchre, and stooping down, he beheld the linen cloths, clothes laid by themselves. You see that? And departed, wondering in himself at that which was come to pass. Very interesting. So Peter and the disciple, the disciple whom Jesus loved, both went to the sepulchre. That's John 20 and 2. They both ran quickly to, to the sepulchre, but the disciple whom Jesus loved outran Peter. But when the disciple whom Jesus loved got to the sepulchre, he only stooped and looked. Peter came, he went in, and Peter was able to see while he was stooping in that the linen cloth that was laid by themselves, they were not where they were when they were on Jesus. They were separated. So Peter saw the napkin that, it, that was on the head of Jesus had been wrapped by itself as well, John 20 and 7. And Peter didn't even remember the scripture that said that Jesus would rise, John 20 and 9. That scripture is Psalm 16 and 10. Peter left the sepulchre wondering in himself at that which was to come. Interesting to note that after Peter saw nobody, he left. But Mary Magdalene looked in and she saw the angels. Wow. John 20, 11 and 12. Ladies and gentlemen, the third day, Christ is risen. Today we can celebrate the resurrection of the Lord. Happy resurrection day to you. This is the greatest day known to the Christian world, period. Because this is the day that we celebrate that the Lord was resurrected from the grave. When God rose him from the grave, it was proof that he accepted the death of Christ, who was the perfect sacrifice, who was the ultimate sacrifice, and who sacrificed his life for me. He who knew no sin became sin, that I might be the righteousness of God. I salute the Lord on today. I'm grateful for the Lord on today. I honor the Lord on today. And as we go to our various churches, we need to continue to preach Christ and him crucified. But we need to also continue to put in the hearts and the minds of people that on the third day, God rose Jesus from the grave. And he is now sitting on the right hand of the father, making intercessions for us. Ladies and gentlemen, I will be in Houston, Texas. Saturday, April 20th, I want, I want somebody to make an initiative and go get a group of individuals, find us a restaurant where we can go to a restaurant and talk about Sunday school. I will avail myself and empty myself that day. I will be in Houston, Texas. There's all of your information. And lastly, April 14th is my anniversary. It'll be five years as a pastor. My good friend and pastor, Pastor Stefan Stone, will be my guest speaker. Awesome man of God, I'm looking for this day. And I'm inviting all of y'all to come and celebrate my pastoral anniversary with me. And last but not least, I promise you, it is uh, ways that you want to support this channel. You can support it. There's a cash app, Zelle. There is the Giblify mailing address, or you can bring it in. I'd love to see your face in the place. Ladies and gentlemen, make sure you like and subscribe to this channel. Make sure you give a thumbs up, hit that like button, and then make sure that you share this lesson. Leave some comments in the comment section below. What is it that you liked? What is it that you learned? So on and so forth. Uh, remember my motto teaching the word of God in the spirit of excellence. And if it be the Lord's will, if the creek don't rise, if the Lord delay is coming, and if I don't oversleep, I'll see you all Sunday at 9 o'clock live, 9 o'clock st Central Standard Time for our live session of this same lesson. Remember the motto of the Ch Church of God in Christ Sunday School. A child saved is a soul saved plus life. Amen. <laughs> Please subscribe to my granddad's channel. Thank you.